My wife is leaving me because I'm balding. It's fine. It's hair loss. Today, I'm going to recap a 2012 action comedy film called 21 Jump Street. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. Morton Schmidt is the school's nerd who fails to ask his longtime crush to prom. Greg Jenko is the school's jock who gets banned from prom because of his poor grades. That's the only commonality between the two. Seven years later, Schmidt and Jenko meet again at the police academy. They become friends and compensate for each other's weaknesses by Schmidt helping Jenko study and Jenko motivating Schmidt through physical exercise. They graduate as partners, but are assigned to park patrol, a job full of boring assignments. They discover a group of bikers smoking kush. They ride up to them and search their belongings, finding an illegal substance. Some of them run off, but Jenko manages to catch one and cuffs him. They celebrate, maybe a little too much. After their first arrest, they are proud of themselves. However, the police have to release him because Jenko forgot to read him his Miranda rights. Because of their immaturity, the two are then assigned to a revived special unit at 21 Jump Street. It's a Korean church, a cheap hideout, where they are introduced to Captain Dixon, who explains that the department specializes in infiltrating high schools and that they were chosen for their youthful appearance. There are two rules. First, they cannot be expelled. Second, they cannot have relationships with students. And by that, he means Jenko, not Schmidt, pointing out their appearance. Dixon calls the duo into his office. A new synthetic drug, HFS candy, is being distributed at Schmidt's and Jenko's old high school, and they are assigned to stop it from spreading to other campuses by infiltrating the dealers and finding the supplier. They are given their new undercover identities as brothers. Schmidt prays to the Korean Jesus, unhappy that he has to go to school again. It was a terrible experience. Jenko laughs at him, and Dixon tells him to cut the crap. They are staying at Schmidt's parents' house for the duration of the undercover operation. His parents embarrass him in front of Jenko. In his room, Schmidt goes through the school album, remembering how popular Jenko was, while he was not so much. In the morning, Jenko starts teaching Schmidt how to be cool, such as one strapping his bag, not trying hard, making fun of people who are trying hard, being good-looking, and driving a great car. They arrive at the school and park in the handicapped parking spot. Schmidt quickly succumbs to peer pressure and starts to strapping his bag. They see that their high school has changed. They approach one of the groups and Jenko tries to act smug and makes fun of Eric and one of the students. When he approaches him, Jenko just punches him. It turns out he's homosexual and Jenko is already being accused of being homophobic. In the principal's office, they are told that the principal is on the verge of a nervous breakdown because of a recent student overdose and that if they enter his office again, they'll be expelled. When the principal asks who of them is Doug, Jenko's concealed identity, Jenko accidentally switches their identities and they get each other's classes. He's in AP chemistry, while Schmidt is in drama class. In his class, Schmidt gets close to a girl he has his eye on, Molly, and quickly gets information on how to get the candy. Because of their chat, the teacher calls him out to audition for the role of Peter Pan. Failing miserably at this, he gets a text from the number on the bench and excuses himself. Jenko is in chemistry and feels that he doesn't belong there. The teacher gives them a pop quiz, and she finds Jenko attractive. He's not the brightest student, so he decides to pick the answers at random. The teacher checks his chest, I mean his test, yes, she stutters. Schmidt texts him to meet up. They go to the dealing room, where Eric is sitting. The duo acts very sketchily, after Eric jokes that they are narcs, so he has his reservations, plus they look 40. To prove they are not weird, Eric asks them to take the candy cure. They hesitate, but this is his ultimatum, so they agree. They try to get it out of their system, but they cannot manage to throw it up. Their next plan is to finger each other's mouths. The janitor is not amused. In the end, they fail and decide to go back to their classes, mentioning that they don't feel anything anyway. The PE teacher approaches them and says that they are late for class. He comments on Jenko's muscles, and that if he read his file, he will be a star on the track. Because of the previous mix-up of names, Schmidt is the star of the track. As Schmidt says this, the candy starts to kick in. The first stage, 
giggling. In the second stage, while the teacher is talking, the boys have no idea what's going on. They are tripping hard. When he wonders if they are high, they flat out deny it, and he believes them. When Jenko is trying to explain an equation in chemistry class, he has been writing the number four the whole time. This is the overconfident stage of the candy. Schmidt runs into the drama class and starts his performance, and everyone is shocked. It is good. Molly likes it, and the teacher welcomes him aboard. He gets the Peter Pan role. The fourth stage is when you have no control over your actions. Jenko interrupts the music rehearsal. Schmidt looks confident. When the baton is handed to him with an overwhelming lead, he is soon caught up, and the teacher is furious. Schmidt is enjoying himself. The fifth phase is sleepiness. The mistakes that happened at the track meet caused Eric to take a liking to Schmidt. Jenko is confused as to why all the nerd stuff is now considered cool. When the duo presents their findings to Dixon, he is not pleased, as their mission is to infiltrate the dealers and find the supplier, and their board plan is useless. At school, Jenko tries to break into chemistry class. He thinks they are cooking candy, but they are playing Bakugan. There, he befriends the nerd group, who offer their help in teaching Jenko. Schmidt tells Jenko that if he had been born 10 years later, he would have been the coolest kid in school. He thinks this situation is great, because now he finally is cool and can sit with the popular kids. They come up with a plan to split up. Schmidt infiltrates the popular kids and Jenko infiltrates the nerds. Jenko reluctantly agrees. That evening, Schmidt calls Molly to get closer to her, but his mother gets on the other line and interrupts their conversation, embarrassing him. Molly finds this kind of funny, and they start talking about their parents. Shortly after, Jenko comes in and starts messing with him while he's on the phone, and eventually, Schmidt manages to invite Molly to a party they are hosting next week. Molly enjoyed the call. Dixon finds out via Twitter that they are having a party, but the duo denies it. He warns them, if they sell alcohol to minors, he will shove his foot up their butts. Yeah, they would never. Schmidt's parents go on a vacation he has arranged for them. They buy two shopping carts of liquor and pick up a block of Mary Jane from the evidence room. They toast a great party, and moments later, the room is full of people. Molly and Eric arrive. Jenko steals his phone and installs spyware on it with the help of his new friends. Eric makes it clear to Schmidt that he dislikes his brother. While Jenko and his drunk friends tinker with the phone, Schmidt gives the group a tour of his house. Some jerk from another school comes in and starts messing with Eric. It's about handing out the candy. Schmidt intervenes and tries to defend Eric. He gets punched and Jenko hears this and comes down the stairs. Things quickly get out of hand and everyone starts fighting. Jenko doing most of the fighting and Schmidt is just being Schmidt. As the Dutchabad gang gets beat up, they celebrate and Jenko manages to slip the phone back into Eric's pocket. Everyone praises Schmidt, but the room quickly goes quiet when they notice he got stabbed. He just says it's great, and they cheer again. Schmidt's parents are driving home. His mother had forgotten her phone. They manage to get the dagger out and take a few more shots to numb the pain. Schmidt manages to bond with Eric and Molly, and he feels like he's always been a part of their group. Schmidt's parents come in and angrily disperse the party. Eric confesses to Schmidt that this is the best party he's ever been to, so he offers to make some quick money, whatever it is he's in. The parents scold the boys. To relieve stress, the duo goes to a shooting range. Jenko admits to tapping Eric's phone, but his partner doesn't like it because he's grown fond of Eric. Eric gives him candy, which he then hands to Dixon and makes it look like he sold the whole batch. As Jenko continues to get closer to the nerd group, they conduct some experiments, and he likes it. Schmidt has a romantic connection with Molly. Jenko and Schmidt drift apart. Schmidt visits Eric's place, and Molly hugs him, and then kisses Eric. Jenko and the guys activate the spy software on Eric's phone and hear Schmidt and Molly talking. She asks him to be careful with the candy business. She doesn't want him to get in trouble, since he's a nice guy. They talk about the upcoming prom. Molly mentions that she's skeptical of prom, but would consider attending if someone fun invited her, alluding to Schmidt. He reflects on the failures in his high school days, but still manages to invite her to prom, and she agrees. She leans in for a kiss, 
but he decides against it and shakes her hand instead. The rest of the group joins them, and they inquire about his brother and why they are so different. Schmidt tells them that Jenko is adopted and how dumb he is, which hurts Jenko, who is still listening. Later at their hideout, Jenko is upset with Schmidt, and other undercover agents approach them and tell them that their candy has already reached other campuses. Dixon is angry with their lack of results. Jenko tells him that he tapped Eric's call and heard him say something about Pinata. Outside, Schmidt asks Jenko if that was all he heard from Eric's phone yesterday, and he lies by saying yes. Before the play, Molly confesses to Schmidt that he is the only guy she can trust. Jenko is presenting his homework in chemistry class when he notices Eric's friends running around with a pinata. He runs off and calls Schmidt. Right before he goes on set, Schmidt vows to get back as soon as he can. They get in the car but cannot make it out. Their car is clamped because of parking tickets, and they thought they looked cool with them. They grab a student driver's car and later see Eric giving a pinata to a biker gang they saw in the park that got them this job. They follow them and start arguing, when Jenko hits the teacher's brakes, refusing to let go, so he hits the gas and smacks Jenko, ramming one of the bikers who jumps on their car in rage because they ruined his bike. They pass them and go through a red light, and the bikers follow them. They swap multiple cars on the way. One of the bikers drives into gas tanks, and they brace for impact but nothing happens. Another biker drives into a leaky fuel truck, but it does not explode either. The last one with a panada drives into a truck with chickens, and it explodes. Meanwhile, at school, Molly worries that Schmidt will not make it to the play. When the duo arrives at school, Jenko claims that Schmidt is screwing up the whole operation because he's too involved and emotionally attached. Schmidt just calls him dumb. The play has already started, but Schmidt makes his way through and embarrasses Molly. He forcefully swaps with his substitute and flies, and just then, Jenko comes in and jumps on him, pissed that Schmidt called him dumb. Jenko falls, and Molly tells Schmidt she never wants to talk to him again. The two continue to argue, and the audience is enthralled, thinking it's part of the show. Schmidt sprays some fairy dust, and that's when Jenko admits he heard everything he talked about with Molly the night before. The principal comes in and tells them they are expelled. Dixon cannot believe it and just fires them. Jenko moves out and admits to Schmidt that he thought they were brothers and that he would have taken a bullet for him. Eric pulls up and tells them to get in the car. They drive to a secluded spot, and Eric points out that he's been scared since cops followed him yesterday. Do you know what happens to good-looking guys like Eric in prison? It rhymes with grape. Eric gives them guns and asks them to help with a candy deal that's going down at the same time as prom. It's time to get their jobs back, they get ready for prom. They wear fancy suits and stock up on guns, do some chores, and partially reconcile just before going out. They go to the prom with Jenko's new friends. Schmidt finds Molly, who is high, and tells her his real name and that he's a cop and asks her to leave before following Eric to the meeting with the supplier. It turns out the supplier is the PE teacher. In the bathroom, Jenko's friends are gathering evidence. They meet up with the new potential customers, it's the biker gang. The gang boss does not recognize them at first, but says Schmidt looks familiar. Molly knocks on the door with phase four of the candy. She is mad and yells at Schmidt that he's a cop, and at that moment, the leader realizes it too. Guns are pointed at both parties, though Eric has time to be disappointed that Schmidt was lying to him, they even made friendship bracelets. Eric is knocked out and Molly charges in. She is taken hostage, but quickly falls asleep. The duo drops their guns, and one of the bikers approaches them to shoot, and it turns out he and another guy are the DEA. The duo is relieved, but quickly shuts down when the agents tell them they just ruined a five-year operation. Nevertheless, they start a friendly conversation, and when both parties learn that they are from Jump Street Division, suddenly one agent is shot and a shootout ensues. Schmidt is not the most useful in these situations. Eric and the PE teacher take off with the money, and the gang follows them, at which point the duo gets out and chases after them. A limo chase begins with a shootout. Eventually, Jenko makes a cocktail of batteries he learned in chemistry and throws them into the biker limo, which explodes twice. 
They confront the PE teacher, who has taken Molly hostage. He starts shooting at Schmidt, but Jenko takes a bullet for him. Molly manages to get out of the teacher's grasp, and Schmidt shoots his manhood off. They both arrest him and read him his Miranda rights. They reconcile for real now and call each other their best friend. Schmidt apologizes to Molly and tells her she deserves better, she kisses him. They are rehired as agents. Captain Dixon is thrilled and informs them that their next assignment will be in college. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.